Welcome to Basic Microphone Theory, Part 1, Types and Transducers. My name is Jan, here at SIE in Byron Bay. Let's get started. Each microphone has three distinct components, the capsule, the body and the XLR connector. The capsule houses the diaphragm, which is a very sensitive part and it's commonly protected by a grill. The body houses all the internal electronic components, such as circuit boards and capacitors, resistors and so on. The XLR socket is then used to connect a microphone lead. Microphones can be addressed either from the front or the side. Most pencil condensers are front address microphones, that means you speak directly into it. If you look at a side address microphone, such as the Telefunken C12 on the right hand side, you may see that there is a diaphragm inside the grill that stands upright. Therefore, it's addressed from the side in a 90 degree angle. This is typical for many studio vocal microphones, such as large diaphragm condensers. Talking about large and small diaphragm condensers, they are generally two different types. They have pros and cons. We talk about a small diaphragm condenser when the diaphragm is less than an inch in diameter, and we talk about a large diaphragm condenser when it's equal or greater than a one inch in diameter. What is a microphone? A microphone is effectively a transducer. That is a device that converts variations in a physical quantity, such as pressure or brightness, in our case, acoustic energy, into an electrical signal, or vice versa. So let's take a sound source like the speaker icon, we place a microphone such as the legendary SM57 in a room and connect a microphone lead. A sound source produces a certain sound pressure measured in Pascal. Effectively, it gives us a fluctuation in pressure over time. And this pressure uh, moves the diaphragm fore and back. And this movement can then be converted or transduced to a voltage, commonly millivolts over time. So we talk about acoustic energy that moves the diaphragm and therefore produces kinetic energy. This energy is then transferred into electric energy and microphones use a range of different tricks to transduce kinetic energy into electric energy. No microphone can convert acoustic energy into electric energy directly. The way a microphone turns kinetic energy into electric energy is given by the microphone type. And there are a couple of different categories that I want to talk about now. It's the transducer type. There are three categories of microphone transducers. The dynamic microphone, the condenser microphone, and just for the complete picture, let's also talk about other types. Dynamic microphones are commonly categorized into either moving coil microphones or ribbon microphones. Condensers are either electric condensers or capacitor microphones. We could also talk about tube microphones, although that's more the amplification circuit rather than the transducer itself. The category of others includes things such as the carbon microphone, which is used in telephones and other devices, which is not a common studio device, so we won't go into much detail here, or piezo microphones, which we sometimes find as contact microphones in acoustic guitars. However, for studio applications, they are not the preferred choice. So let's have a closer look at the moving coil microphone. The moving coil microphone uses the principle of electromagnetic induction. Let's get started with the sound in the room measured in Pascal over time. This sound energy moves the diaphragm in and out, represented by the dotted line. Behind the diaphragm we will find a permanent magnet suspended in a fixed position. Attached to the diaphragm is a coil. A coil is effectively a thin copper wire that's wound up around the magnet in a flexible sense that it can move for and back. And on the ends of this coil, we can measure an electric energy. How does it all work? Focus on the green arrow, which indicates a positive halfway, which will therefore press the diaphragm in. An inwards motion of the diaphragm will also move the voice coil inwards across the magnet. The law of induction says that as a motion occurs between a coil and a magnet, Electrons flow down the wire, creating an axis on one end of the wire and a deficiency on the other side. This can be measured in millivolts. Therefore, we now have an axis of electrons on one end of the wire, giving us a positive electrical half wave. The blue arrow indicates a negative half wave, which would cause the diaphragm to pull outwards, which would then move the voice coil the opposite direction across the magnet, 
This will reverse the polarity of the electrical motion inside the wire and therefore create a negative amount of millivolts. Examples for moving coil microphones are the legendary Shure SM7B, the Electrovoice RE20, here is the Shure 55SH, also known as the Elvis microphone. The Sennheiser MD441 is a legendary microphone that sounds very good on snare drums or horns or on many other applications. The brother, Sennheiser MD421, is a standard microphone for toms, but also for dialogue and many other situations such as horns again. The Shure SM58 is one of the best-selling microphones in the world and a standard microphone for live sound vocals. Here's the brother, the Shure SM57, which is a standard microphone for instrument recording. It works on snares, guitar amps, and on many other signals as well. Lastly, a specialist for kick drums, here's the AKG D112. Let's move on to different transducer types. The ribbon microphone also uses electromagnetic induction to transduce kinetic energy into electric energy. Inside a ribbon microphone, we will find a permanent magnet again with a north and a south pole. A very thin ribbon made from a metal foil is suspended in between the poles. On each end of the ribbon, an electrical conductor or wire connects the ribbon to the XLR connector. A positive half wave in the acoustic domain will therefore push the ribbon one way and closer to one pole of the permanent magnet. This motion will cause electrons to move through the wires and therefore creating a positive amount or surplus of electrons on one end, which will give us a positive half wave. A negative half wave in the acoustic domain will pull the dial from the opposite direction or closer to the opposite pole of the magnet. This creates an opposite direction of electron flow in the conductors and therefore a negative half wave in the microphone cable. Typical examples for ribbon microphones are the AEA A440. Also, the ARF84 is a very popular and fairly highly priced microphone. The Biodynamic M130N or the Coles 3040L. RCA were really big with ribbon microphones like the 77DX. Another company to mention is Royal Labs with the R121. Now let's have a look at the condenser microphone. The condenser microphone uses capacitance or a fluctuation in capacitance. Therefore, we first need to understand what a capacitor is. A capacitor is indicated in this circle over here. It's a device that is used to store an electric charge consisting of two metal plates separated by an insulator. It is important to note that capacitors work only if they have a supply of DC signal commonly 48 volts, also known as phantom power. Capacitors are standard components on most electrical circuits. They can also be used for microphones in a sense that the thicker backplate is firmly suspended inside the microphone and the thinner line here is the other side of the capacitor is suspended freely and can move forward and back with acoustic energy. What that means is that a positive half wave will derive the diaphragm, the left line, inwards or closer to the back plate, which then causes a certain flow of electrons across the conductors that are connected to each side of the capacitor, thus creating a positive halfway in the microphone cable. A negative half wave in the acoustic domain will pull the diaphragm outwards or further away from the back plate. As the distance increases, the flow of electrons reverses direction and causes a negative half wave in the microphone cable. Examples for condenser microphones are the fairly modern Slate Digital ML1 or the vintage Neumann U67, the Earthworks RS25, the Rode NTG1, the Manley reference microphone, the DPA 4080C or the Sennheiser MK2 capsule. Thank you for watching. I'd like to invite you to continue with part two.